Hello and welcome. I'm Cynthia Miller and today we're going to be painting an ammonite. Um, an ammonite is a fossil made uh, millions of years ago and it is uh, a shape um, known as sacred geometry. You can see these shapes in, in nature everywhere. And what I'm showing you here is the area that we're going to paint. It's just a, a rough sketch, but we're going to do sort of wiggly lines along the inside of these particular shapes that we've created with the spiral and um, the straight lines coming out from the center. So I used my ruler to uh, make these lines very light uh, pencil and then what we're going to do is uh, erase the pencil once we've got all the paint in, uh, in the different sections. So again this is sacred geometry, a shape that we find in nature, in shells, the shapes of waves. So I'm just looking at a new color that I uh, got last week and my new little palette. I was looking for something a little bit bigger and white and uh, this color turns out to be quite a bit darker than what I wanted but uh, just wanted to show you the process that I go through to um, choose my colors and I'm using a fairly a uh, small brush for the center, basically a uh, zero to one or two for the smaller areas. And then I'm using my, uh, I think this is number six, for the, um, the inside uh, shapes that are a little bit larger. And so I'm just dabbing on some water, getting that paper wet. And I do one or two sections at a time as I go on. And this one, as I mentioned, turned out to be quite dark so I did shift my uh, my colors a little bit but it's a nice dusky purpley um, shade that uh, I quite like but uh, I end up um, choosing another one it just seemed to be too dark so that's why it's a really good idea to make some color um, swatches and so the the pink and the blue the the green and the brown were really nice combinations so I'm just starting to, um, with a bigger section, and you can see how I'm wiggling my hand with the brush along the edges. And this is how we get this effect. We don't take the paint to the pencil line, but we simply fill it in with really wiggly, rough edges. And so we're just starting out with one section at a time and move our way around. I'm doing, giving you a close up here so you can sort of see the rough edges. It doesn't have to be uniform, it's just a little bit rough around the edges and uh, it was actually kind of bleeding in at one point to the pencil line, but it's perfectly fine. We uh, just continue to move around the circle, around the spiral, and we're wetting down the paper first in these bigger sections. When I got to the smaller sections, I didn't wet down the paper, I just filled them in. But I find that wetting the paper with bigger sections really helps to blend the paint in. And again, just going around with some wiggles on the edges. And you'll notice there's a, a little bit darker shading, a little bit lighter here and there. The first layer is uh, simply the setting out the shape and we'll go through and add more colors as we go around the circle. Now we've made it halfway around the spiral and what I'm going to do is flip my board around so that I can start painting the other half. I always try to do things in sections. It makes it a little bit easier, more organized. And what you want to do is always have your wet paint on the left if you're right-handed and the opposite if you're left-handed. So it's just the same as, as writing left to right. Just um, following the, the spiral around with, with more paint in the sections. So we're filling in our last section of the spiral and as I mentioned I use a smaller brush to get those little squiggly lines on the outside of that section and I've used quite a small brush on the inside of the spiral. It basically just put small strokes in there. And so uh, just showing that I worked from, from side to side to, to keep that going. Now the first half is going to be dry and I'm going to be able to add another layer now. So again, just starting out with light colors. You can see there's a, a few darker shades in the top right. 
and it, it looks a little bit more natural if, if there's different tones and um, shading. Um, but you can uh, start to add your next layer. So I wasn't quite sure what colors to use. I think it's better to get things figured out before you start, but I uh, wasn't sure about this new color. And um, I got out the color wheel just to sort of share that again to look at the, the colors that you can use. You can use colors along the one side of the color wheel, if you like, so the pinks and, and the oranges and the reds, or you can do the blues and the greens. Um, there's no uh, complementary color in that, but you can certainly add a little bit. So I just uh, noticed I missed a section there. And so basically what I'm going to do is keep to the blues and the greens and maybe add a little bit of yellow in as I go, just to give it a little bit of interest. We're trying to use our imagination with our colors and bring out the, the, the tones and the textures of what might look like a, a very colorful stone or maybe a very earthy, earthy color. I'm going to include the, um, the spiral that we did in the afternoon as well, the second class. This was from our first class and it was more earthy, rich browns and reds and you'll notice that at the end. This is the one we did last year with the blues and the greens. We just sort of did spots and same with the pink. We put the pink on and then we put the blue on top. So I'm going to do a little bit more depth this time around. I'm going to add more colors, more tones, and um, just have fun with it a little bit more. So greeny blues and uh, yellows. And I just dab it on there. Sometimes I uh, bring more water onto the, onto the first layer. Sometimes I put water on first. But basically just doing, you know, very simple spots. I don't get too caught up in, in what those shapes look like because this is uh, the second layer. I probably will go around and do a fourth and maybe even do a fifth layer before I'm completely finished. So I'm trying to make the colors look uniform so that it's not uh, one color and then another color in the next section. I want it to sort of blend together but have different tones and shapes. Um, and um, shadows and light and dark make it interesting. Now if you find that your um, paint is a little bit dark you can just use a piece of tissue and soak that up a little bit. It's a, a really nice um, effect because it sometimes leaves a bit, bit of texture as well and uh, it's just one of the ways that you can bring in a little bit of um, interest to instead of just plain flat paint. You can give it a little bit of, of texture. Now the color that I started with was the dusk, purple dusk I believe, and I've used the thalo blue. I've used uh, a blue that uh, is in my palette with no names, and um, I've used quite a bright yellow here. So it's the complementary color of the blue. As you can see it, it uh, really sort of brings some light to it. And uh, just think of a, a field of blue flowers with the odd pop of, of yellow. It's such a beautiful combination. So I'm just going to work around, continue to put blue in most of the sections and just adding these little dots of water and then bringing the, the pigment onto the, the paper and letting it spread. It's really fun to um, have, you know, that freedom to let your, your watercolor spread and just do what it's going to do and within the, uh, the confines of that, that shape. You still have a limit, little bit of limitation, but it gives you lots of opportunity to, to play with uh, the different layering. So we're just working our way around, putting different textures into the sections. And you'll notice I've, I've just got a tiny brush now going into the center. And I think I dabbed a little bit of water in there first. And now I'm just going in there with pigment and letting that spread in tiny little lines in that spiral. And so just play with it. Don't put too much water or paint in there. You want to keep those sections separated and uh, just keep the squiggly lines 
consistent and use your small brush. So we've gone around the spiral with our different layers of colors and we've let it dry and you can also take it to your hair dryer and hold your hair dryer about six inches, four to six inches above. And just make sure that's completely dry before you erase the, the pencil lines. And that's what I'm doing now, just gently going through each section and taking out the pencil lines. And it leaves a really lovely um, sort of shape shifter when you look at it at different angles, the, the shapes begin to really take on that of uh, the spiral. And it's kind of fun how it just gradually comes together in its uh, beautiful form. So I hope you have fun with this. And if you're interested in joining us for our paint circles, please do. The link is in the comments. And this is our final Ammonite. Have fun with it.